Hello everyone and welcome to one of my astronomy videos. Today we will continue our exploration of the um, Skywatcher Solar Quest that you see here ready to be used. In the previous video I explained how to install it and, and my first um, opinion of it. Today we will actually see it in action. So it's a beautiful day here in Nottingham and uh, we are all set um, everything is powered, I just need to turn it on and it will find the sun and track it. Now, I will explain in a future video how this is done, how I assume this is done based on my experience as a programmer. But right now, let's just focus on what we can see from it and we will try to detect some features using, again, one of my tools that I have developed by using artificial intelligence and machine learning to automatically detect solar features. So we will see all of that in a second. So let's power it uh, and, and see what it can do. So the way it works is that you just need to press the power button for a few moments and the LED the red LED will start blinking. It's uh, sunny, so we, I cannot see it clearly, but it blinks. It will take a while for the mount to get the GPS signal and to start the uh, alignment and solar detection process. Now, if you are outside, this is faster because you don't have all these thick walls and roof to cover you from the GPS signal. But in our case, it will take a while, um, probably a minute or so, till we actually get the signal. Once that happens, it will raise the um, scope to the altitude of the sun, and then um, it will rotate till it finds the brightest source of light, in our case, the sun. Now, before that, it should uh, level itself, but we'll just have to wait and see when it does that. All right, so it seems that um, it didn't level, but instead it just went straight to, uh, to the sun. Now this could be because I uh, tested it um, once before and I kind of uh, memorized some of the settings. So um, apparently it's not always uh, leveling the scope before doing the um, search. So uh, at this point, it should be uh, aligned and um, we can um, check this if we um, look here, as you can see, the sun is coming through the second um, circular opening. So all good, we've got it set up. So now let us do some, um, some solar observations. So this is um, my setup. Um, my application is a Python script uh, with a small configuration file where I can choose the gain and exposure and the interval for doing the analysis uh, if it becomes too um, computational heavy. So um, let us start the um, script. It does take a while to uh, boot everything up. Um, and once that's done, we have a nice 
view of the solar disk as you can see it already here it's uh, nice um, it's not fully centered this is one of the issues um, you need to tune it to uh, get the sun and solar disk centered in the image now in my case the solar disk is slightly larger than the um, size of my um, uh, frame so I won't get the full disk but I'll get most of it you can already see uh, some of the uh, nice prominences detected in real time um, there is a big one here uh, to the uh, bottom left of the image this is uh, really extraordinary and there are two more here this is not that visible at this point this is more visible and let us try to move a bit the sun to center it and, and see if we can capture more of, uh, of the disk look it, it now detects a filament um, these are a bit more tricky to detect given the granularities on the sun's surface so it, re it requires more training data but as you can see um, the solar quest is capable of quickly um, going for the sun and finding it not fully centered we need to do some fine tuning so let's do that now just a little bit more all right so this is centered and now i will move it down so that the sun goes up come on just a little bit more there it is all nice and easy and i will press power twice so that it saves the settings for next time just two quick pushes of the power button all right so at this point you see it nicely detecting lots of features including sunspots uh, filaments four prominences on the solar disk this is really nice now the um, sun looks a bit overexposed here um, in the center so what i will do i will try to decrease the exposure times a bit just going to update the config file and we'll update a bit the exposure time maybe yeah looks better as you can see it's not that exposed here in the center now you see some 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 problems with my sensor now if you remember from one of my previous videos this camera is an old camera i used it for an old sky project it's been outside for over a year um it accumulated lots of dust and it fell a few times uh, and, and, the, and the sensors are not that good anymore so you can see this here this spot here and and there are some other um, spots here which are on the sensor itself uh, they're not dust on the optics of the solar scope or, or um, anything like that so this is how it nicely works uh, the frame rate is somewhere around um, six to eight frames per second um, without the detection feature now with the detection feature which i'm using right now i get one frame per second so this is why you see the image updating um slowly um because it takes a lot of time to do the processing um, but uh, it does work out nicely so um let's try to further decrease the exposure time to 2900 um, let's 
So I'm, I'm really curious about better seeing this prominence here. Um, as you can see, there are other prominences in these areas here. It detects one of them here. It doesn't see these ones here. Um, let's try to increase the gain uh, more. Now, usually when you increase the gain, you lose visibility details on the disk, but you gain more contrast on the edge. So let's push it to 60 and see what happens. Takes a while to update. Once it does that, now you can see um you can see here um the reddish color of this prominence here um let's push it let's stretch it to 80 percent i actually like the fact that it sees here this as a prominence <coughs> could work better and actually see these ones as prominence. We have one here which doesn't detect, uh, but obviously it requires more images uh, to train. So let's bring it back to the default setting at 37 and um, let's increase the gain a bit to 5,000 see if we can get more contrast on the edge of the disk. So gain and exposure are similar, but not entirely. Gain is a function of the device. Exposure is a function of the image. So when, when you use exposure times, you actually play with the image itself. Um, gain is more of a um, how the device captures the image. Again, this, this is a faint prominence here, but it sees it clearly with high confidence, 99%, and now it sees some filaments. Um, well, this is not a filament, probably something else. Um, and this is not a facule. Uh, this is our spot on the sensor here. So it, it does confuse things a bit, but that's all right. Uh, it's, it shouldn't be 100% accurate. It's, it's, a, it's a machine uh, trying to uh, do some detections. So now you can see some prominences here as well. So you see when we change the, the exposure time, um, it, it's able to detect more features. So detecting these features in, in real time requires some manual tuning of the properties, the gain, the exposure uh, to play around to make things clear for the machine learning model to um, detect the features. So um, as you can see here, it also saves all the images uh, to a um, folder where um, we can later on go in and double check. So if I go to the folder right now and uh, just pick one of the latest images that we have and try to bring it up on the screen. So um, now this is an older image from one of my previous tests. Uh, we had another clear day here in Nottingham, uh, March, mid-March. So uh, these are the latest images that we have from our um, you see here, all these are saved. Um, this is nice because we can um, double check these detections later, validate them, try to detect some more. So for instance, in this case, we have some, some prominences here which were not detected and some filaments here outside which also were not detected. <coughs> well, 
It detected this one, so you can assume that it detected everything. It depends on how you interpret things. Um, there are some sunspots as well here, which were not detected. Um, for instance, this one here, I know for a, reason, for a fact that these two are, are, are spots on the sensors uh, of my camera, and, and, and these ones as well here. Um, but, but this one, I, I believe it's a sunspot, which it actually detects as a filament. Um, so it needs some retraining um, at some point. So other than that, um, a nice view of the sun with, uh, with its features. Now, as, as always, um, we can um, we can try to sharpen the image by focusing um, manually. So um, let's uh, let's try and, and and go and see what happens. Um, and how this looks like in, in another software, which is called Sharp um, ML. So I am just going to uh, stop this so we can um, press Q from quick and let's open sharp cap so this is sharp cap um, I'm gonna connect the my camera this is it um, obviously, I have different settings here, so I will um, try to go back. Uh, so we we were at roughly three milliseconds on on the uh, on my application. So three thousand is three milliseconds. So this was the image that we got. You see, the uh, sun is dancing. The the frame rate is higher in this case. We have about 19 frames per second without the machine learning, uh, the sun boils, um, dances a bit. It does this because uh, I'm looking through a window, differences in temperature uh, inside, outside, uh, atmospheric uh, turbulences um, at altitude, but it, the sun is nicely centered and focused. So um, let's try to bring it more into focus. Let's play a bit with the focus. So right now I am, well, trying to rotate a bit the focuser. It's at one um, and a half. This is the value it has right now, so I am going to try to push it to one and a half is, is three markings away. So it has uh, one, two, three, four, five markings between one and two. Now it's at two markings. It looks a bit better, doesn't it? Um, let's bring it to one marking, not bad. Let's put it, bring it to one sharp. Yeah, it's still not bad. Now it's at, this is out of focus definitely, is at, at a mid, midpoint between zero and one. Uh, let's take it to two, out of focus. So definitely the focus is somewhere around um, one and, and, and two or two markings and one and one marking. This is better, uh, one marking. I actually like it better than this one. Let's 
So just have a look at this gorgeous prominence here. This is amazing. And um, you see it has two spots here. Um, a nice prominence here as well. This one, which is not that visible, lots of filaments on the surface. And it's tracking nicely. Well, I just wish wished I had I had this um, during the solar eclipse last year, but it was out of stock uh, at that time, so I had to wait for a few months to uh, grab the mount. But it it does an excellent job. So let's play a bit with the exposure times and again um, trying to bring out some more on the surface right look at this uh, it's amazing look at this prominence here that was not that visible um, but the machine learning algorithm got it uh, correctly and you can see here some other prominences which are not visible uh, unless you increase the exposure times much all right let's bring it out down to uh, two and a bit I like this one I will take a snapshot of it Some turbulences at this point. Take it more because of the turbulences. You don't want to um, catch a frame uh, which is uh, distorted and then fuzzy, blurry. So this is the game. Not much else to see. I found 37 to be a nice value for, for, for our purposes. So I'm going to close this one. And, and let's go back and see uh, how this works um, now. Once we focused it better. All right, so you see some sunspots here. Um, it does have a bit of a problem with this one. It sees it as, it sees it as a uh, faculate, but um, so there is some some confusion for it there. But it sees the fil it sees the filaments. It sees the it actually saw a, a, a spot here. This one it sees as a filament, but it's actually a sunspot. Um, all nice and good. All right. This is it, guys. Um, this has been a um, longer recording because I wanted you to see how um, SolarQuest works and I wanted to see some of the features that uh, are visible today on the sun and how we can use machine learning to detect them. And it's really nice, especially for beginners or for educational purposes, to have such a um, tool. Uh, my code is on GitHub. I will post the link for those interested. And obviously, I will keep on working and, and um, improving this by training it with new images as I capture them during my observation hours. Um, so um, I hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned. Uh, for my upcoming video on how the solar quest actually works, how it detects the sun and points to. 
Thank you.